welcome to LA's Characters. We're here in Brentwood today above Sunset Boulevard to meet our next guest, Mr. Jerry Norman, institutional stock salesman, expert investment real estate executive, and one of the greatest basketball minds that the state of California has ever produced. John Wooden himself asked Jerry to join his staff at UCLA, and Jerry was with the Wizard to create basketball magic. Let's go inside and see how Jerry is today on LA's Character. Hello, sir. Hi. All right. Got my cameraman Bruce Kalk with me. Nice to see you, sir. This is my good friend Bruce Kalk. How are you? This is Jerry Norman. Should we go into the office? Let's go into the yeah. office. Let's sit down and hang out together. What were you watching on TV last night? <laughs> Anything good? Yeah. You got the lights on? Do you hear? Yeah, lights, lights on. We're just gonna hang out and spend a little time together, chit chat. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you got um, some beautiful memorabilia here. Are you? You got some beautiful memorabilia here. Yeah. Yeah? Is there a favorite picture of all these pictures that are here that you no, like the most? No, not really. No? You know, there's had so many great pictures and, you know, so many great players we had. And, yeah, I don't have any favorite, I don't think. Maybe, maybe this one. Oh, that's beautiful. That's after, that's 1964. Well, we won the first national championship, and I think the gals had on a. They were, we weren't we weren't favored in the game, so we were like Avis. We were number two. You're, you're number two. Yeah. <laughs> but you came through, right? Yeah. You know, normally people don't like to change. You know, change. People don't like change. Correct. And so when you when you, you know, uh, propose something that's changed and it's a major change, they're resistant to it, and. Uh, and I think also one of the big uh, mistakes in life, as well as coaching, which is part of life, is assumptions. You start making assumptions. Well, mm -hmm. this is, oh yeah, these two guards can shoot the ball really well. So if you, do, if you don't guard them outside, I mean, they just fill the basket up, you know. You know well, if anybody ever tried it. Adam Smith needs revision. What are you talking about? If we all go for the blonde. We block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. So then we go for her friends. But they will all give us the cold shoulder because nobody likes to be second choice. But what if no one goes for the blonde? We don't get in each other's way. And we don't insult the other girls. That's the only way we win. When we played Oregon State in the, in the regionals of that year, 64, of course, we don't have any size. They've got seven foot one Mel Counts, six nine Jay Cardi, both of which played in the professional league. Mm. And we're probably 15, 17 point favorites in the game. Mm. I think we beat them by 15 or 17. Love it. Because we didn't guard anybody out past the free throw line. So, right. I mean, common sense would tell you, would you rather have the ball with a guy six nine and seven foot two inside to shoot it, or would you rather have two little guys outside who's further from the basket shoot? But why is common sense so so little uh, experience? Well, that's how everybody else played. Because the best result would come <laughs> from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself and the group. Ash, this is some way for you to get the blonde on your own. You can go to hell. Governing Let's dynamics, see. gentlemen. Governing dynamics, Adam Smith. What's wrong? That's why they're out there playing guard. They're really good shooters. Yep, yeah, really. We'll find out. Right. You know, and the same thing when we played Cincinnati, they had the same thing, huge size on us. And we end up losing by two. We didn't, never did guard. We didn't guard uh, either one of the guards the whole game. And the one that beat us at the end hadn't scored it in one point, not even a point. That was 1963, correct? That was that was 64, and uh, 
the guy, in, they inbound the ball to one of their guards and he couldn't get the ball to somebody. They only had like 12, 15 seconds. They'd taken a timeout. So we knew where they were trying to get the ball and they knew where they were trying to get the ball. So they couldn't get the ball where they wanted to try and get it. And the guy knew the time's running out. He's got, so he just shoots the ball 25 feet out, makes it. Has not, doesn't have one point in the entire game. Play the whole game. That shows you how big score in the college game. Mathematicians won the war. Mathematicians broke the Japanese codes and built the A-bomb. Mathematicians, like you. The stated goal of the Soviets is global communism. In medicine or economics, in technology or space, battle lines are being drawn. To triumph, we need results. Publishable, applicable results. Now, who among you will be the next Morse? The next Einstein. Athletics, uh, business, all of these factors really are mathematical. It's, it's all a matter of percentages and risk and reward type thing. In other words, mm -hmm. How much risk are you willing to take to get a certain reward? And we needed to take in basketball in 64, we have a very, very talented team. And uh, we got blown out of the tournament the year before virtually with the same team because we, we were thought we were running, you know, and we played a running team who was better than we were. So, uh, but anyway, the next year, we had to take some risks. In other words, let's, our big thing in our conference, most of the teams were walk the ball up the floor teams. And if we let them do that, you know, we're gonna have some problems, even though we've got a lot of talent. Maybe we can even win the conference, but we don't know because, you know, we don't have size and there's some good teams in our conference and in our region. You know, San Francisco had a really good team. Uh, so you, you just, you come up with ideas that are mathematical. And do you apply that and same then you, idea? And then you say, what, what's, what's the percentage probabilities that this is going to succeed? You know, in the early part of the year, we really didn't know because until we, until we played the first couple of games, we really don't know, you know. But uh, uh, it, you know, it functioned very well from the start because most of the coaches in those days were just focused on size, you know, they were, and, and turning the ball over. Oh, they're pressing us to get the ball. Well, that wasn't the reason why we were pressing them. And uh, we could get the ball or steal the ball, sure. You know, and we did some, but that was not the primary purpose that we were trying to do. We were trying to, to raise the tempo of the game, make the teams we're playing play the way we want to play, what we're better at, which is running up and down the floor, spread the floor. And, you know, with the players we had, they're, you know, they're very, very good if you put them in a spread court situation. So, so if you went to, to J.D. Morgan or you went to John Wooden and you were selling him, selling him an idea, the zone, uh, you know, the zone press, selling the idea that you need your own special defense to guard Elgin Hayes. I mean, that's just, you know, to me, that's just brilliant. Did they, did they, were they, Resistant were they? Were well, they? The, the fortunate part about it with with Coach Wooden, he's a, he was a very good listener, and uh, he he knew we had some talented players, but he, you know, had always played the same way. You know, we just try and push the ball up the floor the best you can, and and uh, but when you do that, sometimes you know t teams that may be a little less talented you have have got more size. Uh, you know, they're gonna, they're going to take advantage of you, so. Uh, he was a good listener. He knew what he didn't know, which very few people do. Most people think they know everything. Mm. And, and Wooden knew he, he didn't know everything, and he would be a, he a good listener. Did you ever you know, have the same experience well, in basketball that you did? You know, that part where you, just, you didn't have to be a visionary. I just had to understand that there's a value in real estate. Stocks are much more volatile. They're up and down all over the place, which is not over the years, the rate of return on real estate and stocks is very, very identical, pretty close. Right. Now in California, it may be a little higher in real estate than it is in, in stocks just because of the, what's happened in California, which is a whole another story. And, yeah. But, but uh, the demand in real estate jumped way up in California and it helped, you know, it helped the real estate part. But we bought properties all over the, all over the United States. So. Mostly apartments, and then we own a, we own a lot of uh, 
mobile home parks. Not many people. What factors would you use in, in, in determining which pieces of property you felt would... would uh... Well, kind of a risk-reward type thing. If we're going to pay X for this property, how, what is our cash flow going to be? Mm -hmm. and, and what is the potential for it to grow? You know, and that would include what the demographics are in the area where you're buying, uh, the quality of the property, uh, that type of the historical growth of the area in, in population and businesses. So it was it was pretty mechanical, but uh, there would be ones that you know you'd take a bigger risk to get a bigger reward. So in, in uh, you know in retrospect on a, on a on a uh, you know a life well lived, what's the what's the what philosophical nuggets would you love to leave with the you know the next generation, or what do you tell your grandkids, or you know what do you what do you um, what do you share with them to to make their journey easier and uh, and um, you know more productive and fruitful? I don't know. I never really thought about that much. You know, mm -hmm. I have I have two daughters and a son, and uh, my daughter is out in Agua Dulce. She likes it out there. She likes to make a piece of property. Other daughter is in Crow Del Mar, and just a few blocks from Korean Creek, which is real close to her. Yeah. And John lives in Balboa, which is right, right. They're all within a few blocks of each other. And we've gone down. We go to dinner down there with them. And my daughter had a cream up a few times. And John's close to Korean because he played one year. With him. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, uh, and my son was born 15 years later. And then he waited 30 years old to get married. So he's got two, I have two uh, grandsons, one that's just gonna turn 60. And when, 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 when they lose a big game, what do you tell them? Just, I don't talk to them about that at all. In basketball, when I was well, coaching. Well, well, well the, the, how do you empower them? How do you empower them? What do you give to them in, in the, well, with all your wisdom? Well, problems with being in coaching because I didn't have that much time to spend with them, mm -hmm. and my girls. Right. You know, I, when I got out of coaching, when my son was born after I got out of coaching, so I had time to spend with him. Have you bridged all those gaps? And, oh, and yeah. uh, Good. Good for you. We have great family get-togethers. You know, I like we had one for Easter, Easter breakfast. Beautiful. Good on. Right on. They all got, in fact, my son called the other day and called his sister and said, you know, we have to have a great time. Why don't we have, we don't have to have, just have, have a reason to have Easter Christmas. No, let's just come over dinner. Yeah, just come on over and get have any for it since I don't have to do anything. Yeah, grill up. Yeah, right. I'll, well, I hope they're cooking and cleaning. Yeah, throw up hamburgers. Yeah, grill up a couple of hamburgers. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for your time and and, uh, and being so gracious with us. Sure. Sure. Jerry Norman, yes. LA's characters. Watch next week and we'll have another episode. Have a great day in the city of angels, Los Angeles, California. I have made the most important discovery of my career. The most important discovery of my life. It is only in the mysterious equations of love that any logical reasons can be found.